lift your hands, lift your hands, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have in your presence. Thank you for ministering to us, giving us a chance to receive your holy word. Thank you for your great blessing that you bestow upon us. Pray right now for the spirit of wisdom and revelation for God to reveal himself to you and speak to you in the few moments we have together. Father, we are thankful for this opportunity. Thank you for blessing us so much. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we receive the spirit of revelation and the spirit of wisdom in the knowledge of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Right. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's a blessing to be back. It's a blessing to be back. And I'm excited to come in time for Swollen Sunday, John 3.16. Amen. How many are excited about John 3.16? All right. So I want to just, um, I bring you greetings from so many places, but I'm sure I will mention them along as we go along the line. So, I want to just share with you a short message today from um, what I call number 75. Yes, number 75. You must be a soul winner because God does not want anyone to perish in hell. Yes. That's Number 75, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word. Amen. Not willing that any should perish but that all should have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. But that all should come to repentance. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to read from the Good News Translation. <laughs> the Lord is not slow to do what he has promised. As some think. Instead, he is patient with you because he does not want anyone to be destroyed and he wants all to turn away from their sins. Amen. Yeah. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. On that day, the heavens will disappear with a shrill noise. The heavenly bodies will burn up and be destroyed and the earth with everything in it will vanish. Amen. Amen. Now, John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Now, every one of us must today decide that we are going to become involved. I, I don't mind at all uh, sharing this with you on Sunday. You know, some people may feel that there's something more important to share with you, such as your financial development. 
or your career and so on. But I, I, you can go to a church which is sharing about that if you want to, right? But what we are sharing here is about winning souls and saving people from hell. And you see, I believe the reason why I don't have to leave this message and shift into sharing with you about uh, your career and your finances is because of what the Bible says. Amen. Are you there? Now, in Mark chapter 10, Jesus said in verse 28, Lord, then Peter said to him, Lo, we have left everything. Everybody say all. We have left all and have followed thee. Amen. We have done what? We have left all and followed thee. We have left all and followed you. We've left our businesses. We've left our schools. We've left our visions, our personal ambitions, and followed you. All right. How does that help? How does that help you? But read verse 29, and then you see how it helps you. Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left his house or his brethren or his sisters or his father or his mother or his wife or his children or his lands for my sake and the gospel's sake. Huh? But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. Amen. Amen. So following Jesus has rewards. Leaving things to concentrate on God and his work has results that are even financial. Because he's promised lands, houses. There are financial benefits for following God and leaving things for God. Whether you like it or not, it is in the Bible. And whether we want to believe in it or not, we are reading the words of Jesus. And I'm not ashamed of the words of Jesus. The Bible said there is nobody who has left anything to follow God who will not get back in a hundredfold, hundred times houses. So I hope you left at least a house so that you can get a hundred houses. God, God has calculated everything that everybody has sacrificed. Yes. If you sacrifice anything, God has done a calculation that you are not aware of. Yes. And brethren, which is family. Because many times you have to sacrifice some family life. Yes. You may have to spend your Sunday away from your brothers and sisters. Many of us have family meetings on Sundays. I don't know if it's also like that for you. They will say there's a meeting, old boys, old girls, associations, various groups 
that we belong to. They've chosen Sundays to do that. Whenever we explain to them that Sunday will not work for me because Sunday is my main day. I'm doing one week's work in one day. I can't come for old boys association meeting. And I are going to receive children and land with persecutions. People will persecute you and hate you without any reason. Out of their jealousy for what God has done for you. And in the world to come, you have eternal life. So there's a great benefit in doing whatever you have to do for God. That's why Peter said, Lord, we have left everything for you. Jesus said, you've left everything for me? I want you to know there's nobody that will leave anything for me that I have not seen the brother, the sister, the friend, the money, the land, the house, whatever it is that you've left for my sake. That I'll, Even we as human beings, when people sacrifice for whatever, we want to pay them or let them be paid back. Yes. How much more God? God is righteous and God is fair. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, back to number 75. There was a man called Ron Regan. Yes, he was called Ronnie Paul. And he went to the market. And on the way to the market, as he was entering the shop, another man came out. And uh, the man stood in the way. And he also stood in the way. So the guy gave him a blow. And the man also gave him a blow. And he fell back onto some bottles that were there. Mm -hmm. So the bottles burst. All right. And then the man took one of the broken bottles. And then he cut the other man with the glass and cut the arteries and the ligaments and everything. So when that happens, within minutes, all the blood comes out of your body. So as his heart was beating, all his blood was coming out of him. Then, uh, they rushed him to and hospital. When they got to the hospital, they said he needs some surgery, urgent, that they cannot do it there. So they put him into an ambulance to take him away. All this is part of number 75. Then, as they were in the ambulance going, a young man who was attending to him asked the man whose hand was, uh, they had cut all the arteries, everything. He was dying. He asked him, Sir, do you know Jesus Christ? And the man said, I cursed, I cursed the guy who asked me whether I know Jesus Christ. I cursed him with all my strength. And he said, There is no God. Who is this Jesus? Then the young man looked at the man who was dying and he said, to him, call on him, call on him, call on Jesus, he will help you. Then said, the man said something told him, call on Jesus. So he said, at that time he was foaming at the mouth, he was dying. And he said, Jesus, if you exist, please help me. And then the young man continued to say, the paramedic was telling him in the van, you see, that's why you must be aware that you are a Christian all the time. He was telling the man, Jesus died for you. 
He gave his life for you. Then suddenly, smoke filled the ambulance. And he said he couldn't breathe. And he said, what is wrong? I can't see. And I called out. He said, I can't see. Then he started hearing different voices from the people that were in the ambulance. Reza. Reza. I think it was his nickname. Reza Regan. Turn around. Don't come here. You see, he had, he had started descending into hell. And some people who were in hell started to speak to him. Go back. Stop now. Don't come here. As I kept hearing these voices, the smoke cleared a bit and I could see people. The people in there that I could see were burning. Their arms, their faces, and their bodies were ablaze. And the fire wasn't going out. And they were screaming my name. They were calling him. <laughs> and then he got closer. Then he saw two people standing close together. Do you know who the people were? This, the man was descending from the ambulance. The ambulance was moving this way. But he was descending. He saw two people standing close together. And they were his two biological brothers. And they were burning. And they were screaming. And they cried. They said, what are you doing here? You know, he asked them, what are you doing here? He said, you died on the highway. You were driving at 160 kilometers per hour. And you hit, that's, I don't know, 160 is very fast. Yes. Rarely will you get to 160. He said, he was, you were driving 160. He told the guy, his brother, his brother's name, he wrote his, the, the name, Freddie and Billy. He said, what are you doing here? You died. You were driving at 160. And you hit a concrete wall. What are you doing here? Then the only answer they said was, don't come here. There is no way out. It's horrible. Don't come here. Then I looked to the, uh, his, another friend called Charles. And he said, Charles, what are you doing here? He said, the last time we saw you, he said, you were drunk. And you drove the car when you were drunk, into a pond or a lake, and the car turned upside down, and we couldn't open the car to take you out of the water. And that is how he died. So he asked the Charles, Charles, what are you doing there? And the man answered, go back. Don't come here. Don't come here. Then he turned and saw another person. He saw so many people. Richard, Richard, I can't help you. And he, you know what happened? He said, Richard, we were in Atlanta. You didn't know what you were doing. You had a pistol, a gun, without bullets. We went into a shop together. And when we got into the shop, the storekeeper, we were robbing the store. But the storekeeper had a real gun. And he pulled his gun out and shot the guy in the heart. The heart even came out. Yes. Well, the storekeeper was ready for nonsense. <laughs> yes. Now, don't come here. That is what Richard said. All I knew, everything went black. 48 hours later, I woke up and the doctors had decided not to amputate my arm. And that was how 
experience that he had that saved him. Then he turned to God and gave his life to Jesus. But it happened through a fight that he had where at the fight it turned against him and the guy rather cut his arm and all his blood came out. But as he was dying in the ambulance, these are the three people, his two brothers, Fred and whatever, huh? Billy, yeah, that he saw them covered with flames, yeah. And his brothers, Fred and Billy, they had died because they went 160 kilometers per hour and crashed the car. Then he saw his other friend, Charles, who drove the car when he was drunk into the water and they couldn't open the car to take him out. And then the last guy who was called Richard, he went to a shop. He was with a gun without bullets, but the storekeeper also shot him. And they, he saw them in hell. This is somebody who's writing his story. And that's how come he got saved. And this man has told this story over and over again. And, and you see, our duty, the Bible says that God is not slow to do what he has promised. As some think that maybe God is slow. When people do bad things, I, it's nothing. I, I'll get away with it. No, 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 no. God is not slow at all. Instead, the Bible says, he is patient so that's why some people haven't died. It's because of patience. God is patient. So no, take your time. When the time comes, I will, I will move. When the time comes, I will move. When the time comes, I will move. So a lot of people are just hanging on God's mercy and God's patience. Yes. And there are people, everybody here knows a friend whom you were young with and the person is dead. How many know somebody who was your young friend in your youthful days? We are all youthful, but has died physically. I know people like that. And you ask yourself, why are you escaping? So I want you to know that Jesus loves people that is why he doesn't just even wipe you out when you start insulting God. you just be coolly watching. Maybe, maybe the person can be saved. Maybe somebody will speak to him. Maybe, maybe the person will turn. Maybe. <clears throat> a pastor spoke to a young lady and he told her, come to Jesus. He was talking to her. She was a young girl. But, uh, she, she didn't give her life. She said she would come. But I don't know what happened. They were in a nightclub. I don't know whether it was a bomb or a fire. But when it happened, the pastor described, he said, they called him. Then he went to the nightclub, said there were bodies everywhere. And he walked, they brought him to this young girl. He said, look, he had spoken to her the day before. Told her, give your life to Jesus. She said, I'll come. Not, not now. <clears throat> so, not everybody is as lucky, eh? Not everybody is as lucky to be given so much time and chance with God. God is not slack concerning his promise. So many of us here, yeah, how many have done bad things and you were surprised God didn't slap you? Raise your hand if you were surprised. You were thinking that something is going to happen. Something is going to happen and it didn't happen. Raise your hand if it has happened to you before. Something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. But nothing seems to happen. Isn't it? It's as if God is blind. As if he can't see. And you do it again. It's like, hey, today I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. God is going to kill me tonight. By tonight I'll be dead but you, you are still alive. And then it goes on and on. Uh, the Bible says that God is not slack concerning his promise, but rather he wants 
Any, doesn't want anyone to perish. He doesn't want anyone to be destroyed. But he wants all to turn away and come, turn away from their sins. So next week, Sunday, is a special Sunday. The church is full as we stand now. As we speak now, the church is full. Full, upstairs is full, downstairs is full, everywhere is full. So next week, Sunday, is Swollen Sunday. That's people are asking, what are we building these uh, things for? That's why we are building them. It's because the, when we do Swollen Sunday, we don't have anywhere for people to be. So we are, we are going to give ourselves to God's work. Yes. And what is that going to be? I just want to have 15 minutes or 20 minutes where everybody is quiet. I can just talk talk to people about John 3.16. Just if I get 15 minutes or 20 minutes, everybody is quiet, then I can speak about John 3.16. That's all. That's, that's all that we are doing. Next week, Sunday, is John 3.16, Swollen Sunday. If everybody is quiet and calm, listen, just listen to what is being said. You know, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power, the power of God unto salvation. God has chosen that by the foolishness of preaching, something as simple as preaching, that men should be saved. And so people, people need to hear. People just need to hear the gospel. That is that. But you see, so that is why in, in uh, Europe and America and many places, you are not allowed to preach. You are allowed to do everything but not preach. <laughs> everything is allowed but no preaching. Because there is so much power in preaching. I mean, if, there's, if you are not afraid of the allow us to preach. Allow us to speak. Give me 10 minutes to speak. Give me 15 minutes to speak. No. No 15 minutes for you. So, let us know that Following Jesus has great advantages. Great advantages. I, I, I can say, I've been a Christian for so many years, serving the Lord and working in the church. If you follow Jesus, there are benefits. And th there's nothing that you sacrifice and that you leave behind that you don't benefit from somehow. You benefit from... Uh, Serving the Lord from following, or that's why Peter said, We have left everything. Oh, so, yeah, no problem. Leave it for me. I will give you a multiply. That means that land, property, marriage, happiness, children, it's in the hands of Jesus. It, he, it is also under his control. If it wasn't, he would not be able to tell you, I'll give you lands and houses and all these things in this life if it was not in his control. How would he be able to give it to you? How would he be able to give it to you? How, how can he direct it towards you? Yeah. There is nothing that you have left to follow Jesus that will not be a benefit to you. Amen. Amen. Now, number 76. You must be a soul winner because the founder of World Vision said, let my heart be broken with the things that break God's heart. Amen. Let my heart be broken with the things that break God's heart. All right? Where is Melissa? Where are you? And your friend who is sitting by you? Come. And who is the other one there? Uh-huh. Come, three of you come. Where, where, are your, where are your phones? Don't let anybody steal your phone. Bring your phone. Come. Yeah. Now, you don't know why. Look, give me volume so that I don't have to raise my voice. Please. Now, you stand here. 
Stand here. No, I think uh, you come. You go here. Right. Now, let's say that I am Jesus. Okay, I'm not Jesus, but let's say that I'm Jesus. Right. And no, I don't need microphone. Give me some tissue, please. Does anybody have tissue? Yes. Give me. No, no, no. I don't want your tissue. Bring this one. I uh-huh, have. Bring it to me. Oh, yes. Now, let's say I am Jesus. Are you there? Are you there? And uh, I've come home. All right? I've come home to rest. Okay? Come nearer, you. Stand here. And you two, come nearer. All right? Now, you see me as I've come home very, meanwhile, I'm Jesus working hard. I'm coming to clean the stove to prepare some, heat some food. You see? And these ones, where are your phones? They are on their phones. Be on your phone. They are on their phones. They don't care about what I'm doing. You get what I'm saying? But then this my daughter, she's a jewel. She, she wants to help me. She comes to help me. She's, and what? I want to and, help you. Yeah, but I'm, I'm going to make some food. I'm, oh, don't worry. I'll do it for you. What, do you. what would you like? I think I have some jollof. I have some fried rice. You I have, have some potato. Potatoes? Yes, please. Really? Yes, please. And this one, they don't care what I'm doing. They are just chatting on their phones. Isn't it? Now, so you said I should do what? Please, which one would you like? I have like three foods in jollof, there. Jollof. jollof. Okay, yes. jollof. And would you like chicken or pork? I have two. So both. You like both. Okay. And would you like some kelly? Don't ask questions. I don't like, I don't like questions. Please. Yes, please. Just do it. Huh? I'll bring it. You Anything bring it. you want. So what should I do? Please, just have a seat. I'll bring you some tea. No, I want to. I want to. Oh, Please, huh? don't worry, don't worry. I, I'll take care of it. I'll sort everything out. Just rest for me. Please rest. I should rest? Yes, for please. All I want. No, but I'm, I'm used to no, doing no, these no. things for myself. No, no, please, I beg you. I'm here now, so I'm here to help you. Wow. I should, I should sit down and, and relax. Yes, yes, please sit down and relax. Anything you want, just call me. I'll bring it to you. Will it be long? Oh, no, 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 no. Two minutes. In fact, I'm even late. I'm and these ones, they don't care what I'm doing. They don't ask any questions. They are not bothered about my work. I'm doing my own hard work. They are just chatting, laughing. They don't care. Huh? Is the food coming? Yes, please. Yes, it's coming. But I've brought some juice for now. I've brought some juice for now. Juice? Yes, please. Ah. This is heavenly juice. <laughs> so I should I should sit here. Yes, please. Where where should I sit? Please, I, I'm getting you something. I'm coming. Now, ah, I, uh, this one is very helpful. Eh? She, where I should sit? Please have a seat. Have a seat. Eh? I'm Actually, getting you some nuts as well. Some what? Nuts. Nuts. I've not had that before. Oh, really? Yeah, that would be nice. Bring it. Wow. I'm really enjoying it. Now. Please, I brought the nuts. So I'm going to get the food ready. Yeah, food ready? Yes, please. Okay. So what should I do whilst I'm oh, waiting for just, the... uh, Would you like, uh, maybe let me turn on the TV for you. Okay. Yes. Turn on the TV. Can watch this, I should watch this one yes, right there. Yes. <sighs> This is a wonderful jewel. I'm enjoying this girl, you know. Now, you know, because she's taking an interest in what I'm doing. Yes, she's taking an interest and she's trying to help me, you know. Now, go and bring the jollof and come, wait. 
All right. Uh, this is a jollof. Uh, let's try it. Let's see. Oh, no, you can't. Uh, uh, wait. Uh, uh, mm. Mm. There's no salt in it. There's no salt in the jollof. <laughs> but anyway, even though there's no salt, I'm so impressed with your effort. You know, I'm so impressed with your effort. And uh, you know something? You know something? I'm looking for somebody to bless and to love. Yes, I want to bless somebody. You know, I have something special. Bring me that radio, that radio. Oh, yes. Yes. This one you cannot buy. Who shall I give this to? I'm giving it to her. You know, i never forget how cheerful you were that night when I came and you came to help me. I really remember when it touched my heart. I mean, you were all over me. You were all over me. You said, juice, this, that, whatever. Even though there was no salt in the jollof, it was okay. It was a very wonderful thing. And supposing I even now need a beloved and I don't have any beloved, who should I choose as a beloved? Can anybody choose for me? Ah. Me, myself, I don't even have to pray much. I can look to the left and I say that this one is better than these ones that are always on their phones. But why didn't you help me when, I, when you saw that I was working, I was involved, I was doing so? Why? Why? We were busy. We, were, we had a lot of things to do on our phones and in school, work, a lot of things are occupying us. Yeah. So, and the hair on Instagram, we really had to get the hair. So we had to check the different types. And you have of to art. work hard to be able to get it. So you can't just sit down and do nothing. You have to work hard to be able to achieve such things. So. I feel funny. I feel very funny. And she said she's busy. You know, I felt it in my belly. So. Ish. Oh, my dear, come. Thank you so much. Take a picture, take a picture. So that you don't forget. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Father, give her more orange juices and more, more good things. Yes, yes. You see, number 76 says, eh? let my heart be broken with the things that break God's heart. Amen. Amen. Yes. Let my heart be broken with the things that break God's heart. So you saw me struggling here. Eh? At 2 a.m., I couldn't know where to find the matches. Eh? Eh? You do it. Uh, you still want to do it? Yes, For the old man? Yes, please. Oh. Wow. 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 And you still don't want to do anything, isn't it? You've repented. You've repented. Yes, but you've lost the opportunity. This was your opportunity. You were here on stage. You could have done something. Yes. Yeah. God is looking at every one of us. This is your chance to show him that you've seen his work, his work, and that you want to help with his work. So let your heart, was your heart broken when you saw me cleaning and organizing? Yes, please. Your heart was broken? Yes. <laughs> Don't be jealous. You see, some of you are shouting, yay, like... Are you sure your heart was broken and all that? Oh, yes. Jesus said, I'll build my church. And you, as he's building, he said, you sleep, you are sleeping. You don't care about the church. You care about your own business. You said you are doing your own business. Ah. Let me tell you, all the times that I've gotten up to serve the Lord, it has not been in vain. 
It has not been in vain. If you need people to come and sit on stage, they can. Please. You can open the doors for them to come. I don't mind. Amen. I've almost finished preaching. But I want you to remember this. Jesus said, I'm doing only one thing. I'm building my church. And some people are on their phones. They don't care. Oh, church building, one soul, whatever. What? We don't know. We don't care. We are not part of it. But somebody says, if that is what Jesus is doing, I want to just be involved in it. And I will help. And what is a church? A church is human beings. A church is made up of souls, of people. Thank you. God bless you. You may go back to your seats. <clears throat> Number 77. No, no, number 78. Number 78. You must be a soul winner because Carl Henry said, the gospel is only good news if it gets there in time. Amen. The gospel is good news if it gets there in time. Amen. Everybody say in time. If the good news comes but it's not in time, what's the good news about? Good news is only good news if it gets there in time. Turn to John chapter 4 verse 35. Say not ye there are four months, and then comes harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes. Now look on the fields. They are white. They are ready. Amen. Our God of grace often gives us a second chance, but there is no second chance to a harvest ripe crop. There's no second chance for a harvest. You, number 80, you must be a soul winner because Jim Elliot said, he is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. You give up what you cannot keep. You cannot keep this earth's riches. And so many things on this earth, you cannot keep them. But if you give it up to get what you will never lose, eternal rewards. Amen. Amen. Number 81. You cannot, you must be a soul winner because you do not want to be a Christian witch or a Christian wizard. What is a Christian witch or a Christian wizard? A Christian witch or wizard is a rebellious and disobedient person. First Samuel 15, 23 says, Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is witchcraft. So you rebel, I won't do it. I won't go. That's rebellion. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Witchcraft is rebellion. It's the same thing. So we must not be rebellious. And no one here must be rebellious. Amen. Number 83. You must be a soul winner because Robert Savage of the Latin American mission said, the command has been to go, but we have stayed. In body, in gifts, in prayer, in influence. He has asked us to be witnesses to the uttermost parts of the earth, but 99% of Christians have kept pattering around in the homeland. Number 84, you must be a soul winner because every other job has no eternal significance. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58 says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, 
always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing this, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Some years ago, I had a vision. I went to heaven. And the vision, there were fields. It was like there were fields, large fields. And it was like my reward was in some corner of the field, but it was covered in a white, a white canopy. And it was much smaller than I thought. You know? So anyway, I went to look for, to see what, what was under there. So when I got there, they uncovered the white canopy and under were some few wretched souls from some places that I never thought were important. And the Lord showed me that some of the people that you think are the least important are going to be the main reward that you have in heaven. That people that I had not even considered, that, oh, this one is nothing. That one become the main thing. And that's what happened when they went and the man said, when did we see you hungry? Where were you when you were thirsty? When did we see that you were naked? And the Lord said, when you done to the least of my brethren, you were doing it to me. So, 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, we should be steadfast, steady, and movable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. When I went to Papua New Guinea, we had a camp meeting. I can, I can say that the camp meeting was like, um, you know, over a thousand people were there. Papua New Guinea, I've never been there before. But the pastor who, who is there, he used to live in England. And I sent him to Papua New Guinea. It took about four years before he could get a visa to go there. But you should see all the souls steadily and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. In the first love camp in New Zealand, so many souls and real New Zealanders and people from islands in first love church. I can only describe it like the great, great hall, full of great hall. That was the first love. Some of them, not all of them came, but it was like the whole great hall full of people in first love church in the UK. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Many, many, many. And you see, there are pastors that have been preaching steadily. And that is not our other churches in the UK. That's just the first love people. Preaching steadily, steadfast, and movable, continuous, abounding in the work of the Lord. You know, it's important to continue and to be steady and not to be moved by all sorts of facts. Yes. I've been a Christian for so many years, serving the Lord and working in the church. People have come and people have gone. Somebody said we are preaching basics. If this is basics, I want to stay with these basics. Yes. Because, you see, I am a medical doctor, my profession. Real doctor. And I qualified from the University of Ghana Medical School some years ago. It's, I'm not in need of a profession, or in need of a job, or in need of what to do to earn money by the grace of God. Yeah. So what I'm here now, I'm not confused about the things I can preach about this, preach about that, talk about this, do this, do this. So many things I can do. But I believe God wants us to focus on the main thing. He himself will take care of us. And all our issues. Will. I mean, look at Mark 10. Look at that verse again. There's no one that has left houses, land, this, that, that. It's like, it, it's everything. No, look, verse 29. Verse 29, Jesus answered and said, there's no man that has left house. Which are the things we are working for? Brethren, sisters, 
fathers, mothers, wives, that's marriage. Or children. What are we, what are we in this life for? Lands. For my sake. And the gospel sake. So this weekend is for my sake and the gospel's sake. My sake and the gospel's sake. Jesus' sake and the gospel's sake. Jesus' sake and the gospel's sake. Amen. Yes, my sake and the gospel's sake. There's nobody that has left houses, lands, and been sisters, mothers, even a wife. For my sake and the gospel, the preaching sake. You know, next week, Sunday, is nothing for us to ask everybody here. Look, for the gospel's sake, let's gather people to sit down quietly for just 15 minutes. The preaching will be only 15 minutes, about. I wish you can get the feedback to go off this thing. Right. The gospel's sake. What's going to happen in verse 30? Verse 30. But he shall receive hundredfold, a hundredfold in this time. And what is he going to receive? Specifics. Houses again. Brethren again. Sisters again. Mothers again. Children. Lands. With persecutions. And in the world to come, eternal life. Amen. All right? So... This is a great blessing. Um, I'm so excited that God sent not his son. John 3 verse 17. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. 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 Can you hear me, everybody? Yes. yes. I've almost finished preaching, but I need you to listen to what I'm saying. God did not send people to the world to condemn the world. Now, I just want to end by giving you this story. This is Dr. Morris Rawlings, not um, our former president. Another, it's the same name. He was a consultant for advanced cardiac life support programs, fellow of the American College of Physicians, College of Cardiology, College of Chest Physicians, and he was a personal doctor to Pentagon staff, including Dwight Eisenhower. Now, he said one day he had a patient. Are you there? Are you listening? And this man, this Dr. Rollins, he was a, an atheist. All right. Now, what it is is that a man came to see him in the hospital. He was a heart, he's a heart doctor. And the man was complaining of chest pains. So what they decided to do was that they would connect the cables to the man and put the man on a treadmill. Do you know what's a treadmill? Yes, so that whilst the man is walking on the treadmill, he wanted the pain to come. So that when the pain comes, then through the cables on him, the ECG, they will read on the screen what. It's the pain. Like, because sometimes, if it's a heart attack, you see some particular features on the ECG. So he put the man on the treadmill and said, be walking on the treadmill and we have, we have connected you to the cable to see. <laughs> now something was about to happen. How many want to know what happened? Now, instead of, instead of the man getting the pain, he suddenly died. He died, on the, he died on the treadmill. Yeah. And he fell on the treadmill and came, you know, because the treadmill is when he fell off. So the doctor was right there. So he, he started to resuscitate the man whilst the nurses tried to connect a drip so that he can give an injection. So, do you know how they do the heart pumping? They, they press the heart down. Like they are trying to press the heart through the ribs so as to push the heart to pump. So what happened was that as he was pushing, 
he was pushing, then he had to stop and then do something else because they were doing so many things. They were trying to bring the man back to life. He said that when he stopped, the patient would scream, doctor, don't stop. <laughs> and do you know what he said? I'm in hell. He's, he's go, he went to hell. I'm in hell. But the, this doctor Ro- Rollins, Morris Rollins, he said, most patients will say, you are breaking my ribs. Do you see? So he said they put a pacemaker into him right on the floor. The whole place was covered with blood. He says, he was every time. He said, it's like when he stopped, he's, he's gone to hell, then he comes back. He's gone to hell, then he comes back. If every time they stop the pumping, then the guy dies, goes to hell. Then when they pump again, he said, don't stop. He, was, he went into the hell and then came back when they uh, pumped his heart. Yeah, that's how close hell is. <laughs> Meanwhile, the doctor was an atheist. He didn't believe in God. This, that's how he got saved. It's because of this man that he got saved. Yeah. Then he said that the patient said something to him which was an insult to him. Do you want to know what the insult? The patient insulted him. He said that the greatest insult for an atheist is to tell the atheist to pray for, for me. So the, athe- the boy, the man said, pray for me. And he said that was the greatest insult. Then he said, that, I can't pray for you. Then the nurses who were standing around, he saw the doctor. They said, this is the man's dying wish. The man is dying. There was blood everywhere because the heart was being pumped and they had put the thing in and so it was petting all over. They were all on the floor because this was an emergency. It just happened. The nurses were saying, it's the last wish. It's the dying. So pray for him. (laughs) How many realized that the doctor was hot? Yes. So, the, this is what the doctor said. He said, say, I believe Jesus Christ is the son of God. Say it. Go and say it. Keep me out of, please keep me. And say, please keep me out of hell. He told the man, say, please keep me out of hell. If I live, I'm yours forever. And each time we stop the heart massage to adjust the pacemaker, the man would scream again and he would turn blue, stop breathing, his heart would stop and he would scream that he's gone into hell. But he said, after I said the prayer, there was no more fighting. The next day, the man was calm. Hallelujah. And this man, eh, he was so frightened, he gave his life to Jesus and the doctor, who was an avowed atheist, also gave his life to Christ. And he has written many books, this man, because they studied patients who die, how they die, and what happens when they die. There's another one here, if I were to have the chance to read it. He was clinically dead for about 15 minutes. Yeah, he was gone. In fact, when he got up, they had covered his face. You don't normally cover a patient's face. When they covered his face, when he got up with the, with the this thing, the doctors almost fell on the floor. Yes. And then he gave his life to Christ. Yeah. Amazing. So, there are many people in hell. Souls have parted to eternity. Souls will part. And somebody said, don't you have anything more important? No. I, this is the most important thing. This is why Jesus died on the cross. This is why God loves us so much. Hallelujah. Amen. And I know that uh, many, many people are going to be saved. Not only just on Sunday, but through our lives, many will be saved. I was going to Vanuatu, an island, but there was a cyclone and all the electricity, the airport was closed and everything. 
So we couldn't. But the church was waiting. Yes. We have a large church there with a pastor. He always wanted to be on the mission and he's there now. And in Solomon Islands, hundreds of members. All these islands. Beautiful. Be steadfast and movable. Always abounding. God will bless you as you work for him. Oh yes. God will bless you as you work for him. And as you serve him. Ah, you'll be, you'll be going places serving him. And he'll be giving you things you try to get for yourself. You try to get for yourself. He'll be adding them to you. And blessing you with them. I don't believe, I believe that this is the greatest door to God's blessing for every Christian. It's the greatest opportunity for every believer to seek the kingdom of God, to look at what Jesus is doing. So, if this is what Jesus is doing, like Jewel, that Jewel girl, that Jewel of a girl, that precious girl, she loved me, my work. She cared about what I was doing. She even asked me to, I should sit down. And she would take care of everything. Why don't we say, Jesus, just relax. We are here in Ghana practically. We are going to win all the souls for you. You just sit down. Let us do our best. Sunday and Sunday and Sunday and Sunday. By the grace of God. Uh, this church will be a market. You know, Pastor Frank, Bishop Frank said that those who have never been to disco before, don't worry, this is a spiritual disco. But I believe it's also a spiritual market because there will be so many people everywhere that you don't know whether which market you are standing in. It's also going to be a spiritual market, spiritual disco, spiritual market, everything. We are flowing. Hallelujah. And we are serving the Lord. Amen. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm becoming a soul winner, a serious soul winner. Oh, yes, a soul winner, a serious soul winner. I'm going to serve the Lord and win many, many souls to God. And God is going to bless me mightily. Amen. Now, as we close... Number 88, you must be a soul winner because Robert Shannon said, never pity missionaries, envy them. They are where the real action is, where life, death, sin, and grace, heaven, and hell converge. And finally, you must be a soul winner because the blood of Jesus was shed for all nations and tribes and tongues. And they sang a new song saying in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9, Thou art worthy to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, thou wast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Hallelujah. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. Amen. 25,000. How many believe that God that we can be 25,000 people next week? Yes. We are less than 10,000 as we are speaking now, but we are aiming to be 25,000. Yes. 25,000 people to be here on Sunday. Amen. For just a 20, by the time everybody is calmed down, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, sit down and then get a chance that everybody is quiet Then we can preach. How many would like that to happen? And thousands of people will be saved and give their life to Jesus Christ. How many are going to be involved in this great church building work of God? Upstairs, I can't see your hands. Oh. I can see you very clearly, oh, those of you upstairs. Yes, yes. God is going to bless you and God is going to change your life. Lift your hands right now. Lift your hands. Give yourself to the Lord. Say, Lord, if you can use anything, use me. If you can, if you can use anyone, use me. If you can use anything, use me. Palama, Shandoba, Kabaranda, Rababanda. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing. 
Aboka tabarandola mashandola na makabalanda la Paloma de sambanda la babanda la badare de Hama balado shandele makabalanda la babara We give you thanks and we give you praise Thank you for the chance to give our lives to you and to serve you We are grateful We are thankful in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Every standing please Every standing Father, thank you for everyone who is here today. Put your hand on your head. I pray for the soul winner's anointing and the soul winning crown to be on your head. I pray that the day that you see Jesus, you will receive a soul winner's crown. I pray that on your head, instead of shame and disgrace, will be honor and glory from God I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I pray that God will anoint you and empower you to love him and to be concerned about what Jesus Christ himself is doing may the Lord bless you may the Lord heal you may the Lord help you may the Lord fill you with his spirit and strengthen you strengthen you strengthen you to be his servant in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I pray and everyone said amen, amen. now also for those of us on YouTube and Facebook welcome you all I welcome you all to this amazing service. God is going to bless you greatly and change your life greatly. Everyone lift your hands. Everyone at home. Father, thank you for the gift and the grace that is flowing in your church all around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for mighty power. Beautiful power. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Barana Sondele Mashambo Kabazana. Parama Shodala Mandalaba. Thank you for the grace. Thank you for the love that you give to us. Grace to love you, to serve you, to follow you obey you. Receive the grace. Receive the grace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you. And everyone said amen. Now if your head is bowed for a moment, if you are here, maybe somebody invited you to church. I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. Every eye closed, every head bowed. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ. You want to say, Pastor, Pa malada momori kete mandala bi de merendele mamanda hama malanda balando moldire kamanda balanda la manda la badalide halo ramba dalama derimon berene mandele badada palan ashandele mamanda rene mene kobolo dali bedere ha ala harabanda landale dole da mandala baba if you are here and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ. Want to be born again. Lift up your right hand like this. I want to pray with you. Lift it up high. I want to give my life to God. I don't know who invited you. But you want to give your life to Jesus. Then lift your hand. Look at how I've lifted my hand. I want you to lift, it, lift your hand also like that. You want to give your life to God today. If you have lifted your hand like that. Come from where you are standing. Just come to me in the front here. Come very quickly. I'm going to pray with you right now. Just come with your hand up like this. Come, come running, all the way here. Come running, come running to that mercy seat where Jesus is calling. His grace will be your covering. His blood will flow freely. It will provide your healing. 
Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. All of you in front here, lift your hands and everybody also lift your hands. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I give my life to you. I'm sorry for all my sins. I ask you to cleanse me, wash me with the blood of Jesus. Make me a new person. Please write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, for forgiving me, for healing me. From today, I am born again. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching the First Love Church YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this message, click the subscribe button. That way you don't miss out on a single message. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.